Hi everyone, I'm John and this is Geography is Everything. Today we're going to look at what is hazard risk. Hazard risk is the idea of looking at what chance people are at risk from a natural event. For example, if you live in a country such as Indonesia, the chances are you're involved in a natural event such as an earthquake, volcano or a tsunami is relatively high compared to someone like myself who lives in the UK who doesn't get impacted by volcanoes, earthquakes and tsunamis or is at least very unlikely to. So my hazard risk is relatively low. Remember those Venn diagrams we looked at in the first lesson? If we're living in a place with no hazards, then our hazard risk is relatively low. If we're living in a place with lots of natural hazards, then our hazard risk is relatively high. So what factors could increase hazard risks on top of the fact that where you live can increase your hazard risk? Factor one, urbanization. Urbanization is people living and moving into cities. 50% of the world's population now live in urban areas. In many of those parts of the world, especially poorer parts of the world, they are very cramped, very unorganized conditions. And that can put these people, especially the poorer people in the urbanized areas, at higher risk of being impacted by hazards. So when they're hit by an earthquake or a tropical storm, these areas can often be vulnerable areas where these people live and so can be put at higher risk. Factor two, farming. Farming can put people more at risk because again, if we look at poorer parts of the world, farming tends to take place on low-lying land that can easily be flooded. That flooding is actually a good thing. The yearly flooding of a river onto the floodplain leaves a layer of silt. That silt is highly nutritious and actually fertilizes the soil to make good crops. However, by living and farming in those locations, you put yourself at a higher hazard risk from flooding events because those areas are vulnerable. And so if you do get a larger event, then you as a population who live in those areas become vulnerable to that event as well. Factor three, climate change. Climate change exists. It is happening today and we know it's happening today. We have the evidence of it's happening today. Climate change is going to lead to issues. Issues such as drought in some areas, flooding in other areas. Extreme weather is going to be on the increase. Also with this extra energy in our atmosphere, it could lead to more intense storms, tropical storms and flooding events, putting more people at risk and so increasing the hazard risks. And finally, factor four, poverty. This one underpins and is linked to all the other ones and makes them worse. We could have a regional issue with poverty or we can have local issues with poverty. But when people are poor, they are at greater risk of being impacted by hazards. This could be because of the construction of their houses. It could be where they're forced to live. It could be just they are more vulnerable and unable to help themselves in a situation or after a natural event. In reality, at the end of the day, we're all at risk from some form of natural hazards. We in the UK are at risk from storms, wildfires, strong winds and flooding. Uh, in other parts of the world, we can go to somewhere like the Philippines, where we call that a multi-hazard zone, where they could be impacted by earthquakes, tsunamis, tropical storms, volcanic eruptions. And they really, really do struggle sometimes with these multiple events taking place, sometimes two, three, four times a year. So why do people live in those areas? That's what we're going to explore in our next video. Don't forget to subscribe, guys, by clicking the link below here to make sure you get updated content that I will upload regularly. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and our other social media platforms to make sure you can get content that isn't found here on YouTube. 